Well, why not make your own CLI? Why not? Okay, hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining. Well, today we're gonna see how we can make our own CLI. And you may ask, why are we even looking to do this? We already have Putty and other applications available through which we can go ahead and access the CLI of our network device. Well, first off, I would like to begin with uh, this is not just applicable to the ESAs, but any other network device as well. And there's a lot of really cool stuff that you can do with it. For example, RBAC. That is, uh, you got different devices that have different RBAC policies available. In the ESAs, you might not have those, uh, you might not have those uh, policies available or any other appliances. Uh, you might not have certain things allowed or not allowed or allowed or whatever. You can uh, play along with that. You can play around with that, and uh, you know, getting output like show tech holds and all that kind of stuff. Letting your script do stuff for you. Why not do that? And also, apart from that, you will be making sure that if your ESA lags a lot and you're unable to access your ESA, sometimes your GUI is not accessible, your CLI is not accessible from Putty or any other application. What you can do is you can just run this, and it works. I'm telling you. And we can discuss that. We will discuss it in upcoming videos as well. So right now, this is not uh, my Putty application. This is my Python program, which I'm running right now. And you can see, it gives me the feel of the CLI. And I'll tell you why. I just gave you a couple of reasons. And possibly in the upcoming videos, we're going to talk about RBAC and other things. And we're going to implement that. And we're going to see how that helps us a lot. So oh, for example, I have another command available that I can run, which is ah, status. There you go. Just like your own CLI. Okay, work queues, status. Okay, let's see how it looks. Hmm. Now, I'm logged in as an operator right now. So if I try any any other command, for example, if I type engine status, uh, all. And if I run that command, what do I get? Because being an operator, it tells me you're not in the correct access group to use the engine status command. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our program and let's see how was I able to accomplish this. Well, this is not rocket science, but anyways, for those of you who are um, who want to get familiar with Hermico and how to make script, how to write scripts and try to access uh, your network devices? Well, this video should definitely help you. Let's jump over to the script. Okay, so here we are, and this is the script I was talking about. Now, this is fairly small, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, copy this and paste it in the Notepad file. And then we can discuss the script over there. Let me just go ahead and do that real quick. Okay, looking bigger, looking better. What do we have here? From Paramico, import SSH client and auto add policy, because these are the only two things I'm going to use in this program. I got a couple of functions here. The first one is to connect to your network appliance, and the second one is to keep running that of you know output. To to get basically the input from the user again and again. Now, this is where the program starts, SSH equals to connect SSH. Now, that is this particular function. Now, in this function, what we're doing is, so again, this is a, a, the general syntax for any other, let's see, if you, if you have a switch or a router or any, any other networking device, it's gonna remain the same literally for all of those uh, uh, devices. And even this, uh, yeah, you, you you can actually use this program for uh, any other appliance as well. As long as it supports um, SSH, you don't have a problem. And with Paramico, you, you see the Paramico model gives an abstraction of the SSH V2 protocol with both the client side and the server side functionality. So it's good. Now, let's go for it. This uh, is an instance of the SSH client. And basically what this does is this can be used basically to make connections to the remote server, which in this case is this ESA holding this IP address, right? And 
I've mentioned the username right here and the password and the port number. You can take these values from the user as well. It's completely your choice. Again, now when we talk about this particular line, what do we mean here? Uh, set missing host key policy. What this basically tells us is um, if, if you basically remove this line from here, you won't be able to connect it. It's going to give you an error. That is the, the reason is that the keys for this server are missing from your computer and hence going to say the the host keys are not present in the known hosts file and hence it's going to give you that error if you want to read more about that on permico itself i'm going to put a, a a cool link in the description below it is very simple to understand and it's got uh a few examples as well so it's it's a good read i guess you should go through it I'm going to put it in the description for anyone who wants to know more about this. Anyways, so after that, once we connect to it, uh, we are returning SSH, the instance, and uh, here we are storing it uh, right here in this variable. Now we have the other function call, which is CLI underscore access, and we're passing SSH to it. Now here is where the other logic is, and again, it's going to remain the same no matter which network appliance you're using long as it supports the protocol okay now command equals to input esa that's when we that's what we were seeing there right um this prompt and then we have standard input output err and this is how you basically execute commands using permico this is your ssh client instance and this is the value you gotta use okay here this command is what we're supplying it uh right here okay so that's pretty much it literally now uh this program is going to keep running until and unless we don't press exit uh we don't uh, uh run this particular command in there now let's go back to the program and check this exit thing out okay there you go now before that is it still connected okay all right we're good we're good so if i type exit we should exit and we should be good okay that's pretty much it now as i mentioned it's extremely helpful when you're trying to see if you if you know your thing around uh with uh, with permico and your programming and you know how to apply different types of logic um, then you should be able to benefit a lot by using any of these features. Like you can, you can use Permico and REST APIs and other other things available out there to take a lot of benefit from um, you know programming and automation. Well, I hope today's uh, video was helpful. And if you have any questions, you're very welcome. Please put them down in the comments section. I'm going to put the program, I'm going to put the links in the description, those we talked about, and if there's anything um, helpful that I can find out there, I'll put it down in the description. And if you have any questions, please do go ahead. Thank you so much, folks. Pleasure was all mine. Goodbye.